A new Canadian report has found that entering kindergarten well prepared gives children many benefits later in life. Researchers from the University of Montreal tested and followed children for more than a decade and found their early education has a big impact on their outcomes at the end of formal schooling. Joining us for more on this is Jay Weatherill. A lot of our viewers will recognise him as the former South Australian Premier, but he is now the CEO of Thrive by Five. Do you appreciate your time? What lessons do you think we can take from that report here in Australia? What would you like to see our government doing to ensure that more kids are getting access to that early education? Well, make a priority of the early years. Um, we, this is just one of the latest reports which uh, just piles evidence on top of evidence about the critical importance of the early years, that it not only is important for their trajectory for learning through the whole of their life, but also their health and their well-being, and just the general level of capability of our nation. So investing in the early years gives these dramatic returns, and we need the government to step up. At the moment, we have uh, a national partnership for four-year-old preschool, which is just um, drip-fed out. It's rolled over every year. It's not treated as a, a five-year national partnership. There's no certainty. Uh, and we're not seeing enough four-year-olds and indeed even three-year-olds uh, take advantage of these early learning opportunities. Well, as you point out, it's not mandatory, it's not compulsory to make your child mm. attend these early learning programs at the moment. I know that a couple of years ago, Tasmania flirted with the policy of making it compulsory for uh, three-year-olds mm. plus. They ended up having to go back on that. There was outrage from unions and a lot of parent groups as well. Considering mm. the importance of that early learning, would you support mandating three- and, and four-year-old kindergarten for all Australian children? No, I don't think you need to go there. I mean, I think it's more about education. I mean, once people understand that uh, in those first five years you're seeing children making a million neural connections every second with high-quality play-based learning activities. I mean, the old thinking was that you were born with a certain amount of genetic capability and then somehow uh, that would automatically transfer into capability. Now we know it's very much about those experiences, those interactions between parents and children and between quality practitioners and, and children. And, um, you know, this is setting your child up for the best possible future. And, uh, and as a nation, uh, we measured this ourselves. Mindaroo Foundation published a report uh, last year which found that uh, $15.2 billion each year uh, is uh, wasted, essentially, through the costs of late intervention. So fixing up problems that emerge down the track that could have been grappled with earlier with high-quality early learning opportunities um, can save our nation so much grief and, uh, and also treasure. So what's the best advice, Jay, for parents watching this, wondering what sort of um, approach they should be taking to this? Because most kindergarten programs, as we yeah. know, um, they're not compulsory. The ones that do run, they run for between usually two and three days per week. Is that enough? Mm. Do we know how much formal learning is good for kids at that age? Does it matter? if it's at a daycare setting or if it's at one of the programs linked to a school? What sort of information do we have about what achieves the best results? Yeah, well, I think the, the jury is completely in now on the, the benefits investing in the early years. And so there's a massive gap between what we know, this Canadian report's just the latest in, in this, and what we do as a, as a nation. So what we essentially need is a universal early learning system for every child in this nation. And, and that will have this other incredible effect, which is to free up people that, that need to work, because uh, we've also got one of the most expensive childcare systems in the world in this country, and there are some serious quality issues with about one in five not meeting national quality standards. So we need a massive rethink. That's why our foundation is running a campaign, thrivebyfive.org.au. It's, it's a national campaign. It's about putting the early years on the national agenda uh, and it's building momentum and, and that's going to be our big push into 2021. So we want parents to get involved in this. We think this is a, a national uh, economic priority as well as a, a well-being for our children. So uh, get involved, understand the, the issues about the way in which children's brains develop uh, and then demand of your policymakers a, a response that actually provides the support necessary for families. 
Jay, while I've got you just on another matter, I thought I'd get your thoughts mm. on the COVID crisis we've seen unfold this year. We've all really had it uh, drummed into us this year, just how important our state premiers are. As a former premier, mm. I bet you haven't envied your former colleagues having to make the sorts of decisions they're making at the moment, particularly Gladys Berger mm. clean today as to whether or not to let Christmas go ahead. How do you rate the handling of the COVID crisis by our leaders this year, and in particular, uh, Stephen Marshall in South Australia, his handling of the situation there, you're on diff different sides of the political aisle. Was mm. it a great effort from him? Did he go overboard? What are your thoughts? No, they've all done a very good job. I mean, in, I mean, the, the leaders that exist around the nation at national and uh, state level have had to make more decisions uh, in the last 12 months than, than some of us had had to make in, in seven years. Uh, and um, by and large, they, they've all made the right calls. I mean, they haven't got it haven't got it right entirely all of the time, but they're all trying to act on the best available advice. And I think um, I think we're all pretty grateful for the way in which our nation is is governed. And I think it's also about the people. I mean, there's a sense in this country where if leaders are able to clearly articulate something based on evidence, I think our community respects that. And so, you know, there's a strength of, of essentially social capital in this nation, which means that we listen to and abide by decisions. I mean, there's not enough police force in the in the nation to enforce these things. I mean, it's all been happening by consent, but by and large, people have done the right thing. And uh, I just think it's been a, a massive example about why this is just such a, a wonderful nation and, and we're well served by a system of government. You're here, Jay Weatherall, appreciate your time. Pleasure, thank you.